Hello, boys and girls. I'm going to be reading the book today called When Martin Luther King Jr. Wore Roller Skates by Mark Weekland, illustrated by Patrick Ballesteros. When Martin Luther King Jr. was eight years old, a woman in a department store lunged at him and slapped him. You stepped on my foot, she yelled. Martin didn't know the angry white woman standing in front of him, but he stayed calm. Although he was shocked, he simply walked away. Martin was a child who learned to overcome difficulties without violence. Like his mother, he was gentle and caring, and like his father, he was determined and fearless. Martin drew on these childhood traits as he grew up. He became a leader admired by millions of people around the world. It was January 15, 1929, and in the hallway outside his bedroom, Martin Luther King Sr. nervously paced. His family called him Daddy King. Inside the bedroom, his wife was giving birth. Daddy King leaped with joy when he found out that the baby was a boy. No one knew that this small child would become a great man. The Kings named their son Michael after Daddy King, but a few years later, Daddy King changed both his name and his son's name to Martin. Martin's parents gave him a wonderful life. He lived in a comfortable home, and he had a younger brother and an older sister to play with. And he had loving adults all around him, including his grandparents who lived in the same house. Daddy King was a minister. His sermons and his interest in civil rights helped shape Martin's beliefs early on. Martin's mother taught him to believe in himself. You are as good as anyone, she said. In Martin's family church was an important part of life. Once his father hosted a guest preacher from Virginia, the man talked to folks about joining the church. Martin's sister was the first one to sign up. When he saw her joining, little Martin decided to join too. You're only five years old, said the preacher. I'm not going to let my sister get ahead of me, Martin said. I'm joining next. Martin's family lived in a 12-room house on Auburn Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. The house was the center of Martin's universe. In the backyard, he played with kids from the neighborhood. He roller skated and biked up and down Auburn Avenue with his friends. At school, Martin got along with the other children, but there was a school bully. When the bully hit him, Martin refused to fight back. He knew violence was not the answer. Martin's brother was named Alfred Daniel, but everyone called him A.D. He and Martin loved to run and play. They played football and baseball, and they played basketball at the fire station near their house. Because of racial segregation, no black men or women worked there. But at the station, kids of different races all played together. Every evening, the kings sat down to eat dinner together. Martin's father insisted that no one eat until he got home. When Daddy King got home late, the kids were starving. But still, they couldn't eat. First, they had to recite a Bible verse. The boys were smart. The verse they often picked was just two words, Jesus wept. It's the shortest verse in the Bible, said Martin with a grin. Martin often played with a boy from the neighborhood. It didn't matter to Martin that the boy was white. The two of them were good friends. One day, the boy's father told his son that he could no longer play with Martin. Martin did not understand why the boys couldn't be friends. Why, he asked Daddy King. Why did his father say we can't play together? Martin's parents talked to him about race and segregation. They told him that black people were often treated terribly. Martin was shocked. He decided he should hate white people. You should not hate the white man. It's your duty as a Christian to love him, said his parents. Martin had a hard time understanding this. How can I love a race of people who hate me and who are responsible for breaking me up with one of my best childhood friends, he asked. You must try, said his mother. One day, I'm going to change things, said Martin. One day, I'm going to turn this world upside down. Martin was determined. 
He felt angry when he experienced discrimination because of the color of his skin. When he was 14 years old, Martin traveled on a bus with the teacher to a speech contest. On the way home, Martin and his teacher were forced out of their seats so whites could take them. It was a 90-mile trip. Martin and his teacher stood for three hours on that ride home. Martin later said, It was the angriest I had ever been in my life. Martin was very smart. He skipped right over the ninth and 11th grades. By age 15, Martin started college. In college, Martin was popular, but he wasn't sure about the rest of his life. He had always thought he would become a minister like his father, but he began to question his faith, and eventually, though, he came back to his roots. I have decided to lead a church, he told his father. By the time Martin was 25 years old, he had earned a doctoral degree. He married Coretta Scott. Like Martin, she believed the importance of peace. The couple settled in Montgomery, Alabama and had four children. Martin's parents were proud when he became pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. His father, Daddy King, was especially happy. As Martin grew older, he became more active in helping African Americans gain rights. He was chosen to be the spokesperson for the Montgomery Bus Boycott in 1955. Later, he led nonviolent actions, including sit ins, demonstrations, and marches for civil rights. He said that he would not respond to violence with violence. Martin gave some of the most memorable speeches in American history, and in 1963, he gave his famous I Have a Dream speech before 200,000 people in Washington, D.C. In his speech, Martin said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Throughout his life, Martin Luther King Jr. fought peacefully for civil rights. He also focused on helping the poor and on world peace. And in 1964, Martin received the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts. In 1964 and 65, he played an instrumental part in securing civil rights and voting rights for all African American. In 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was shot and killed in Memphis, Tennessee at the age of 39. Throughout his life, Martin Luther King Jr. held tight to his traits he developed as a young boy, gentleness, caring, fearlessness, and determination. By staying true to himself, he became a great American leader.